Welcome back to Spartan Design University, where we try and make learning fun and easy. My name is Paul Cheney, and I'll walk you through the navigation that we're going to use on the phone and on the tablet. Now, while we were offline, I went ahead and I put in the list items with the four menus that we're going to be using for our site. I'm also going to take one of these and give it a class equals active. Active is a word I made up. It could be the word donkey or the word um, cow. It could be apple, but active makes more sense than those words. So now with that is tagged, I can go to my phone and I can start to style this nasty looking list to be a nice looking phone list. So let's start with our navigation. We've got this background color. I don't think we're going to want that. And this hover color, um, we'll come back to that. Okay, so nav bar, we don't need to do anything with that. You don't need to do anything with the list items. Let's just start down here with the actual anchors or the links. We've got display as a block. That's already there. It's good. We want to put text. Text align center. And then we're going to do padding. Remember, padding is inside of 0.7 EMs. Okay, so that spaces them out, puts them in the middle. And we've got a color. And this is white. And then we'll turn off the text decoration, which is the line. So the line underneath each of these words, we'll turn that off. Now I've got white on white, which isn't very cool. Let's put a border around each one. This is going to be a thin line. It will be solid. And it will also be white. And then let's round the corners. Now, in order to see some of this stuff, I actually need to go back up to the container because the container holds everything. Notice I've got a line right here that says background color white. It becomes the nav color on the phone. So I'm going to change that so I can see what I'm doing. So it's a nice blue. So now I've got a line around each of these. Let's go back down here. Actually, this is supposed to be three Fs. I think. There goes a white line. We'll see if we like that. If not, we'll switch it back to black. So then I want to round the edges of them off. So that's going to be a border dash radius. And let's start with 10 pixels. And then we need to push these items away from each other a little bit. So that's space outside which is margin, and we'll do it a half of an EM, or 8 pixels. And we'll set our font dash size to 0.85 EMs. All right, see what that gives us. So there we've got our buttons, and I think I want to change my background color actually left out completely so that it's not the same as what's already there. So we've got a color, background color, and that should be a slightly different blue than what's there. There you go. So this hover color, um, let's change that. The hover color I'm just going to copy and paste that because at this point, instead of a gray 999, I'm going to use that color and that color, which I don't want to type. 
So I'll probably get it wrong. So there's a yellow for the hover. Notice also that with yellow, I get a dark font color. So those both have to be switched in order for this to work very well. The last thing I need to worry about is the active color. So one of these is the current menu. I need to reflect that in my design. So I'm going to add another rule down here, which says nav ulli dot active, and then the anchor that lives inside that. And we'll put a background color. I think that's some sort of a pink. And then a font color that's going to work well with it. No, I copied the wrong thing. Oh, here it is. It's the, there's the color I want right there. There we go, save. Okay, there's a pink. So here's my color. Notice that when I hover over this one, the uh, purple color stays. But when I hover over these, I get the yellow color. So if I were to reverse these two and put the hover color after the active color instead of vice versa, now I get a hover on my active as well because this rule comes after that one. So that may look a little bit more interesting. Remember, there is no hover on a phone. So what I'm really doing is creating a flash. When I touch this thing, it's going to flash this color and then go to that particular page. Now, that's fine for a phone. doesn't look very good at all for a tablet. So we need to do some different things on our tablet to make it function correctly. So let's switch over to here. We've got our nav. Oops, I missed. There we go. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is um, talk to the list items. Here we go. And instead of having them stack, we're going to do a float left. That should make them stack side by side. Looks good so far, except I don't want the rounded button in my header. That doesn't look appropriate. So I'm going to turn the border off. I'm going to turn the border radius. to zero. That turns it off. And then I'm also going to need to add a margin, but let's take a look at it here. Save it. Oh, sorry, I missed an A. I'm talking to the anchors. There we go. Okay. Now, see how these pretty buttons are pushed away from the top? There's a gap between the green line and the button itself. That's because of margin. So we'll turn the margin off. Now they should tuck up nicely against that top line, just like that. So now I've got a nav bar. Problem is, is this page name. Once again, we've used a float, and it's caused problems with the content below. So we return to our source code. We have this line of code. This empty div was the solution for that. So it probably is going to work for this as well, because we're going to keep the nav bar open, stop it from collapsing. Hit refresh. The page name is down there, just like it belongs. Now, let's fill this part right here with the same color as this blue. So we'll go to our tablet CSS. We've got the nav bar. There's the background color that should match. I've added a comment there to remind me what it does. And that pushes that blue all the way over to the edge. So there's our phone, tablet, and our desktop with hover colors in place ready to go.